I have too many welding machines. Said no welder ever, but I definitely have to find something to do with all of them. So that's what this episode's about, or at least the first part of it, because this is a massive project. So here we go, the world's largest welding cart, part one. Now before we go much further, I definitely got to give a huge shout out and thank you to Metal Supermarkets for providing the metal for this cart and these episodes. Now if you're anything like me, you often build some very random oddball stuff and you don't necessarily need like an entire stick or an entire piece or sheet of metal to get the job done. You maybe only need this much, right? Metal Supermarkets is the place to go for exactly that because they will sell you any size of any metal they have on the shelf. It's really a no brainer, especially when you're trying to keep the cost low. If you only need to have like a little bit of aluminum for the tabletops instead of the entire sheet of it, you're saving money, it's cut to length, and oftentimes it's delivered right to you. That is a no-brainer. It's totally awesome. And if you don't have a store near you, which you can check in the description below to find one, you can actually order online. They'll ship anything all the way to your door, anything you need that's on that online catalog. It's truly an awesome deal. So make sure you check out MetalSupermarkets.com and let's get to work on building this. Now, it's really important that you have every single tube pretty much laid out and then your design complete before you actually start cutting. So that way you know the sizes of everything and, of course, the lengths that they need to be. And to optimize your cutting and not waste a lot of material, it's a really good idea to write down every single stick or every single piece you need and then calculate the lengths of each. That way you can cut multiple pieces of multiple sections out of just one stick of material. And then this will, again, optimize the amount that you need. So so I've already gone ahead and actually laid all of these out and figured out how many I needed and how much I can cut out of one stick and then kind of bundled them into uh, each deal. Now it does get a little bit confusing sometimes when you, you try to do all of that because you just have a whole bunch of pieces laying around. But as long as you know the quantities and the lengths of each one that you have to cut, you can uh, simply lay it all out when you're done. Now speaking of cutting, we've got a lot of cutting to do and I mean a ton of it. There is so much friggin' steel in this cart because it's so huge. So I'm not not going to subject you to all of this because it's a lot of cutting but uh, of course we're going to run through some of the stuff that we have i mean obviously we have some pretty long pieces we've got some short pieces we've got miter cuts we have straight cuts we have just about every cut possible so again make sure that you have everything all laid out nice and neat and uh, one trick that i use sometimes to do all of this and make sure that i have everything is to actually lay them out on the ground so that way I can put it all together and then figure out which pieces I'm missing which is pretty much what I did here so now one thing a lot of people ended up sending questions in about is miter cuts and one of them started like an argument on Instagram, if you will. But the reason why I use them is because they're less time consuming. Yes, you, you have to kind of get clever when you measure them out because everything is long end to long end and you got to know when and how to flip it over in a saw. But as far as the finish work and everything else like that is concerned, we have no need to cap ends or anything like that. That's why I am using miter cuts on this one. It takes an extra two seconds to lay it all out and then you, uh, you, know, you have the exact same amount of welds as a square joint would and I don't have to worry about capping. Now, I plan to get into an episode about this you know one of these days i'll talk about miter cuts but you know i'm using them exclusively on this build just because it's less time consuming but uh as soon as i get all of this done i'm gonna lay it all out uh, like i mentioned before and i've got basically two of everything but i need to make sure that uh everything i have that i was accurate or correct in my all of my cuts so i can lay all this out inventory it basically and find out what else i need like these little pieces right here i forgot uh, about two of them and uh, i had to make sure that i had them in uh you know basically done and and ready to install so and after I got it all done I basically stuck everything together and as soon as I've got two of everything I'm pretty much finished with that end of it and it's time to start welding it together now I definitely have a whole bunch of welders to choose from but the only one I haven't really tested out here other than taking it out of the box and using it a few times is the Everlast MTS 221 STI now this is a multi-process unit AC DC MIG TIG and stick I don't plan on using a whole bunch of stick functions on it but we'll definitely see if the MIG welding and the TIG welding holds up because I have a whole lot to do on this particular build now as far as tools are concerned uh, to make sure that this all lines up and of course we have to make two pieces of uh, 
of each one of these, basically two identical uh, ends to it. So we got to be really picky about our measurements. And the only tools that I'm going to use to do this, I mean, obviously we need the welding machine, but I'm going to bust out my tape measure for all of this. And of course, I'm going to use a uh, holding magnet, the uh, square type triangle holding magnet, whatever you want to call it, the uh, orange thing on there. Everybody asks me where you get one of those. And usually you can pick them up at your welding supply store, or you can check the uh, uh, description below. Uh, in the links there, I have uh, tools that we use and recommend. And of course, that one's on there too. But aside from that, we need a square. And the square is going to basically tell us if we are square because sometimes those holding magnets aren't really that square and of course we need to check again multiple times for distortion and make sure that every time we tack welded everything stayed in place and you know check check double check check a few more times and check again after that that kind of concept is uh, is what will keep this thing as square as possible so really important that you take your time trust your measurements take very accurate measurements or as accurate as you can make sure that you use your square don't get in a rush don't get in a hurry now I only say that because I'm one of those types of people that really likes to rush and get in a hurry uh, you know I'm like okay well screw it it lines up here on the cuts everything's good and uh, whatever and by the time I get done with it you know sometimes it just doesn't line up perfect and we got to do a little bit of stretching but one thing I should stress on this one is I am only going to tack weld everything I'm not going to do full weld welds on it just in case something changes or something is messed up or something just isn't right or whatever the case is. It's also going to reduce some of the time that I have to spend here um, doing all of this. So uh, really important that you just, uh, you know, take your time, make sure that it lines up just right. And then as soon as you get it all finished, you set this thing up and holy wow, you know, everything in the drawings did not look like it was actually this friggin' big. Like this is huge. <laughs> I can't believe it. Now I gotta get the other side done, which I'm not gonna show you all that one because it looks exactly the same as this one, but we definitely have to stick them together. Now on this particular day, I was a little bit short-staffed, meaning I had no cameraman, no help, no nothing. Uh, just just me. So um, the best way that I found to do this, I have to stand both sides up and then stick them together with uh, four different lateral pieces that need to go across that will basically establish our width. So I already have those cut. They were all done in the actual cut times or the cut order that we did everything, but in order to make uh, all of this stick and maintain some of that structure, I'm going to weld all sections where those lateral supports are going to go, and then I'm going to grind away uh, a section of them where the tube has to actually lay down because I didn't measure this to compensate for any welds and I definitely don't want any giant gaps so again make sure that it's all welded up that way inside of the tube that weld that joint where the weld is will still be there and it will maintain as much structure as possible now the important thing on this one is to make sure that you you know really go after those measurements and uh, make sure that they are very accurate make sure it's very square make sure everything is pretty much good uh, before you tack it all together and all the rest of that good stuff you want to you know we went through a lot of uh you know time making sure that all of our tubes were nice and square and lined up correctly and measured out so when it comes to sticking the two sides together you definitely don't want one to be a little ahead of the other or sideways or crooked or uneven or anything like that you want to make sure absolutely that uh, each side is pretty much identical and that they line up and they're nice and square because I mean this thing's gonna have a lot of weight on it it's a very very big cart and uh, you know there's there's just kinda no messing around here we gotta make sure that everything is right where it needs to be and you need to make sure that you take your time and do that now since I had no help on this one I had to get kinda clever if you will about how I was gonna stick these together because I mean they weigh quite a bit and uh, at first I thought I was just gonna be able to juggle them together and hold them you know but I was only given two hands when I was born so that just flat out wasn't gonna work uh, there was no way to actually stand this thing up and make sure that it balanced in place where it needed to be so I was just kind of SOL on that one took me a minute to figure this one out how I was gonna do it so instead of sitting there you know risking it and breaking a bunch of stuff when it all fell over I decided to weld up some uh, little outriggers to help the uh, the ends uh, or the sides stand up uh, all by themselves and it was just it was just some scrap metal that I had laying around literally just uh, some welding coupons from one of our classes and I just threw it on the side there and it just you know enough to make them stand on their own get them close together and then I went uh, started with the overhead piece uh, one of my lateral supports now this is not measured out where it needs to be or anything like that so it's just to hold it together uh, real quick just a couple of quick little tacks while I go down to the bottom line them up where they need to be 
and then actually fully weld them in place. Now this again, it's just, just some tack welds. We've got to make sure that everything is actually squared up, lined up where it needs to be, and uh, we're good to go, and, and uh, I can fully weld it after that. Now as far as the Everlast is concerned, uh, this is actually pretty stout. I, I wasn't really uh, sure what to expect out of it, because a lot of multi-process machines kind of have some give and take out of it, but so far everything on the MIG side, in both the Synergic settings and the manual settings, are doing really well. I mean, I'm, I'm actually really impressed with it. Now the Synergic setting for what I wanted to weld, as far as 8th inch is concerned, does get a little bit hot, but you can go into manual mode and turn it back down. But really surprisingly, this thing uh, this thing holds up really well, and it uh, it just keeps on plugging away. And I'm also running it on 92.8 gas, and it seems to be just plugging away just fine. I'm digging it so far. So with my four main lateral supports already in, I decided I'm going to pull the trigger on completely welding this cart, or at least every single joint inside, outside, every single one of them. The reason I want to do this is because I want any and all distortion uh, that will happen to already happen, essentially. I wanted to, to do it all right now because I have other things that I have to add, and it's better that it's already basically compensated for all the distortion by the time I get to them. So fully welding on every single one. I'm not going to show you every single joint because, man, there was a lot of welding on this one. So let's just kind of move it right on here. Now, Metal Supermarkets is really cool for ordering exactly what you need. Now, this cart is going to have tabletops built into them, which are all quarter-inch aluminum. And all three pieces are three different sizes. And you'll see exactly why that is uh, later on in future episodes of this, uh, of this build. But uh, in order to maintain uh, the width of the cart, as I put in the additional lateral supports that go in between each one of these aluminum tabletops, I need to have these... Uh, these these horizontal bars kind of in there to reinforce and stabilize and keep that same width throughout the entire piece. Now when I flip it over, I'm going to set all of these aluminum pieces in there or all of these aluminum tops in there so I can set it up with my lateral supports. That way my, my measurements or my fitment is exactly where it needs to be. In other words, I don't want to see anything like uh, the tabletops, you know, with big gaps in them. I don't want to see them, uh, one sitting, section sitting flush, one sitting below, one sitting above, or anything like that. I want all of my lateral supports to line up perfect. I want the tabletops to line up perfect with the entire frame. I want it nice, clean, and smooth. So with everything flipped over here, I have all the plates in place. Everything is nice and fit tight. Those lateral flat stock pieces I welded in are holding the tabletops nice and flush, and they're also helping to minimize distortion as I weld in all of our main lateral supports in. It couldn't be simpler. So with all of that done and out of the way, it was time to flip it back over, and it's probably going to be the very last time this gets flipped over. I'll be very honest with you, it's starting to get really heavy, and I should not have been doing this anyway. I should have called somebody, but I didn't have anybody here until my buddy Nick showed up, which was about, I don't know, 10 minutes after I flipped it back over. Go figure. Now, he saw on uh, Instagram and Facebook the uh, updates that I was giving on this, and I was being really vague, kind of sneaky, and about uh, what I was building, and you couldn't really get all of uh, what I was doing in frame anyway, so he decided to swing by because he's local and see what I was doing and since he is a welder fabricator and a former carpenter I trust him with a tape measure and a welder and all the rest of that good stuff to uh, tag team the uh the uh, mid shelf and the top shelf uh, sections with me. Now, this uh, tubing that we're using on this one is uh, is a half inch shorter. I went with one by two instead of the uh, inch and a half by two that I used on the main structure. And what this allowed me to do was clear up some space on the uh, mid shelf to put some of my taller machines. Now, machines like the AHP Alpha Tig 200, that's a very tall machine. And I need to make sure that that goes on my mid shelf because I don't really want to stick it all the way up in the air. At seven feet tall, uh, it's getting, it would be a little hard to reach in all honesty. So so I want to make sure most of my, my primary uh, TIG welders and machines that I use are going to be on that mid-shelf. And, of course, to do that, I had to free up some extra space on it, which no big deal. We just use some smaller stuff. It also reduces the weight of it. Since the main structure is uh, basically what has to hold everything, the actual shelf uh, that the machines sit on uh, doesn't have to hold too much. It still has to hold quite a bit that they you know since they weigh a lot, but not as much as the entire cart itself uh, for the main structure of the cart. So we were able to get away with just a little bit uh, smaller material, but it definitely went smooth with uh, Nick here to uh, help fly all this iron for this one. So a big shout out to him. Special thanks for helping me out and all the rest of that good good. Let's move on since that one's out of the way. The next day was filled with a job that I was not looking forward to doing at all. 
I absolutely can't stand grinding. I should have just got like the camera guy or somebody to do it. But then again, at the same time, I want to make sure that this maintains the finish that I'm looking for, that I envisioned inside of my head. So looks like I got to be the one to do it. So all of the welds that are visible um, on the front side or the back side or any side that would be typically seen are going to disappear. That's as simple as it gets. I want it nice, smooth, clean, neat reveal. It's not like the welds were like an eyesore or anything to look at. And theoretically, this will get painted at some point, but I want it to be smooth. I want it to be very clean looking. So time to take the few hours and uh, grind it all down. And uh, big special thanks to Jimbo's Garage, who was really kind and brought out the uh, grinder holder with the magnetic base that you see there. He also brought out one of his MIG holders and his TIG torch holder too. So you got to give some love to that guy and uh, definitely a special thanks. Uh, if you don't recall, he actually built the ultimate welding cart, which is what I wanted to name this about a year ago. But since he did it before me, well, he gets the cred on that one and I got to change the name. But nevertheless, it was such a pleasure meeting him. Definitely go out there and uh, support Jimbo and uh, pick up his holders because they're really cool. Now, Eastwood Tools recently sent out a couple of their products. The first one is this 8-inch uh, big shear that mounts to the, uh, the tabletop or something that's uh, really solid. You actually need something really solid to mount it down onto, but I have it clamped onto my uh, workbench here. But they say it can uh, shear up to 3 16 steel, and I've actually tried it out, and it did just fine, so pretty awesome. What I just cut up was 8-inch, and what I'm about ready to slide in here right now is the bar cutter where it'll cut up 3 8 round bar solid stock. And uh, it takes a little effort, but it definitely gets it. That's great for, like, exhaust hangers and stuff, so I definitely like that. The second thing they sent out was their 48-inch uh, box and pan break, which I just recently made a stand for this in a separate video. Also an awesome tool, and you'll see this come up uh, a little bit more. But now with this 8-inch flat stock and uh, the uh, 3 8 round bars, we've got to make something here. And uh, I needed a way to actually... Uh, take up some of that void in this uh, section of the frame. And since this is a permanent uh, attachment on here, I'm building this into the frame. It goes into this episode. Now, we definitely have a whole lot more uh, cool things being bolted onto this card, but this is pretty much the last part of the actual frame, aside from a shelf that I have to add down in this section that I'm working in, which that'll come in a little bit later because I hadn't really decided what I wanted to do with it yet. And this cart went through a couple renditions. So this uh, bit of flat stock that I'm welding in here, along with the bars, the flat stock is for holding, the bars are for guiding, and the uh, cool thing that I wanted to make up out of this one was uh, something I've never ever seen in a welding cart, and that is a really totally awesome something that I'll actually show you here in just a moment as soon as I get it all welded up. But once I have all of the bars and the guides and everything else like that all in place, we can uh, grind down the faces of everything, make it nice and smooth to match the rest of the cart, and this integrated feature turns into nothing other then a spool holder and dispenser for all of my MIG welding accessories. I've got the big spools down below, or at least the uh, number 8 spools or the 8-pound spools that we use. And I have the smaller ones, the single-pound spools that we use for uh, smaller stuff. So I got them all. I can hold a whole bunch of them. And I really love this feature. So you can definitely see we've only just begun, and we've got a lot more in store in the future episodes. So make sure you subscribe and you ring that bell. Now, for those of you who are still watching, this cart's still not finished. We have only the foundation put in place of things that are going to happen to this cart, and that's what we need you for. So get ready to drop some comments, suggestions, and all kinds of other stuff of what you think this cart should look like, what else should go on it, and all the rest of that good good. Now, if you need to get in touch with us, you can hit us up on the FabricationSeries.com website, Instagram at the dot fabricator or facebook.com slash the fabricator series i want to thank you guys for watching as always special thanks again to metal supermarkets for sponsoring this cart and i'll see you guys on the next episode